welcome to this presentation in which we look at radiation heat transfer using finite element analysis with ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. We have a model of two plates. They're going to transfer heat to each other by radiation heat transfer. We'll apply temperature boundary conditions on the left and right hand ends of this model, making one plate have room temperature applied and the other one have a high temperature. We'll set up radiation heat transfer loading on the interior faces of the two plates where they face one another. The result of the analysis will be the resulting temperatures and measurements of heat flow reactions where we're holding the cold and hot temperatures on the outside as well as measurements of radiation heat transfer flow rates between the two plates and out to free space. Here is the Workbench project page. We've taken a steady state thermal analysis and dragged it out into the project schematic area. We've imported the geometry which is of the two plates and now we can click on model, right click, and edit using Workbench Mechanical. Here's the imported geometry. We have two solids and they're facing each other. We're going to use simple meshing with the relevance turned down. Let's right click and generate a mesh. Here now is a simple mesh and since it's a thermal model there'll be thermal elements. For an initial temperature let's assume room temperature, that's the default. In our analysis settings we have just one load step and everything is at default. For our temperature loads on the right hand side you can see that we have 400 degrees Celsius. On the far left hand side we're at room temperature 22 degrees Celsius. This is going to create quite different temperatures in these two blocks. Now our radiation boundary condition could have been set to both of these interfaces that look at each other but we're breaking them out here into one on the left side and one on the right side so that we can isolate the reactions on those faces. Now on that left side we're assuming ambient temperature that's a free space at 22 Celsius so it will radiate out of these gaps to the external space area and on the other body again emissivity 0.7, ambient temperature of free space is 22. Note that it has enclosure number 1. And if I go back and look at the other face, it also has been given enclosure number 1. With matching enclosure numbers, they will radiate to each other. Otherwise, they would ignore each other. Our enclosure type has been set to open. If I set it to perfect, it's not going to radiate to free space and I will not be given the chance to put in an ambient temperature. Similarly, on the other side, it's an open enclosure and I do have an ambient temperature. We're ready to solve this relatively simple radiation heat transfer problem. So I'll go to the solution branch, right click and solve. Here we see the resulting temperatures. Now the two blocks are at a nearly constant temperature. I've inserted one object looking at the left block and you can see it goes just a little bit above the 22 degrees that was imposed on the left side. And in the right hand block you can see that it does not go down very far from the 400 degrees that were imposed. If I put a radiation probe on the left hand face and open up results, I'll see that my outgoing net radiation is minus 7 watts. Now if it was outgoing it would have a positive sign because there's heat actually transferring in we see the minus sign so it's receiving a little over 7 watts. The emitted radiation because it's slightly warmer than free space is just over half a watt. The reflected radiation because the emissivity is not 1, is 7.8 watts, while the incident, what's coming in from the right-hand body, 
is 15. So some of the incident radiation is emitted. You can see the net outgoing has a minus sign, so it's absorbing heat. We look at the other radiation probe. It's on the right-hand face, and it's outputting 15.796 watts. That's the net. Its actual emitted is 20. A little bit is reflected. It's receiving some incident radiation of 6 point something watts. If I look at my re reaction, on the hot side, the right side, we're pumping in 15.796 watts. Note, if I go back and look at my radiation probe here, there's the 15.796 watts. The same as we're putting in on the right side. If I look at my reaction on the left side, where I'm holding it at 22, notice that it's withdrawing 7.3 something watts. And that is the seven, minus 7.3 watts, the net radiation that's coming in. So we're getting some matching going on there. One final thing that's of interest is to go back to the first of these radiation inputs and see what would happen if we gave it an emissivity that was extremely low. Suppose we had it plated with polished gold. The emissivity might be as small as 0 0.02 and I'll enter and that'll change the amount of radiation heat transfer that's taking place. You might note that space vehicles sometimes have gold foil on them. It's being used because of the very low emissivity value in radiation heat transfer. Let's go and solve again. Now the temperatures are still at the two extremes. If we look at the left-hand body, it doesn't get quite as warm now, just up to 22.026. The temperature on the right is similar to what we saw before. But look at the radiation probe for the left-hand side. There's hardly any net radiation coming in because of that very low emissivity, and almost all of the incident radiation is being reflected. That's an interesting result and it shows how gold foil might protect something from being heated up, say, by the light of the sun. Thank you for joining me in this presentation on radiation heat transfer in Workbench Mechanical.